Hi, I'm Carol Beecham from the Genealogy and Local History Department at George Memorial Library in Richmond. This presentation features photos from our wonderful old historical photo collection. I will be highlighting photos specifically from Richmond and Rosenberg. You will get a chance to see what the towns look like from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Since our area has grown so much over the past few years, it will be fun to see what it used to look like many years ago. First up, we'll be looking at the town of Richmond. The history of Fort Bend County goes back to Stephen F. Austin's colony. His colonists were the first ones to settle the area in the early 1820s, which became known as the Fort Settlement. The Fort Settlement grew eventually, becoming the town of Richmond. After Texas won its independence from Mexico, the Congress of the Republic of Texas passed an act incorporating 19 towns, including Richmond, in May of 1837. The citizens voted to make it the county seat in January 1838. Richmond soon became a prosperous trade center for the surrounding area. Richmond has had a lot of courthouses over the years. This is a picture of the fifth courthouse. It was built in 1908 for $75,000 and dedicated in January of 1909. This is the courthouse that they restored a few years ago. It is the one located on Jackson Street or Highway 90. This is Richmond Public School. It was one of Richmond's early schools. This one was built in 1903 and was designed by C.H. Page and Brothers Architectural Firm of Austin. This building held classes for all grades until Richmond High School was established, then it became a grammar school. And here's Richmond High School. It was built in 1912. The tiger was their mascot. I think Richmond Public School and Richmond High School were located in the area where Jane Long Elementary School is located today. In November 1896, L.T. Noyes, a Houston contractor and agent for Diebold Safe and Lock Company of Canton, Ohio, was awarded an $18,000 contract to build a jail which would include sheriff's living quarters, cells, and gallows. There weren't that many hangings there. Only around two or three were discovered in Fort Bend County records at the courthouse. This building served as the county jail until 1955 and is located at 600 Preston Street. It now houses the Richmond Police Department. Hanging was outlawed in 1925 and use of the electric chair began. In 1977, death by lethal injection was substituted for the electric chair. Here is a picture of Jane Long's boarding house. Jane Long, the mother of Texas, lived and ran a boarding house in Richmond during the mid-1800s. Robert Handy and William Lusk bought some of her land to sell lots to establish the town of Richmond in 1837. Carrie Nation was a hatchet-wielding prohibitionist that went around busting up saloons with her hatchet to keep people from drinking. She and her husband, David Nation, lived in Richmond during the 1880s. She ran a hotel called the National Hotel for 10 years, which had 21 rooms. Her husband was a writer for the Houston Post. He wrote an article during the Woodpecker Jaybird War that the young men of Richmond took offense to and was violently assaulted. They moved away after this, but her daughter, Charlene Gloyd, stayed and married Alexander McNabb. The hotel remained standing until around 1910 when T.B. Wessendorf had it removed. The Brazos River flooded throughout Texas in 1899. The rain began falling on June 17th and didn't stop until June 28th. Rainfall totals reached about 9 inches. The Brazos River then exploded over its banks and flooded the surrounding area for, for 12,000 square miles. The damage was estimated at nearly $9 million and 284 lives were tragically lost that week. Thousands of people became homeless. This photograph was taken from the top of the courthouse. The dark building in the center surrounded by flood waters is the Fort Bend County Jail. Flood victims waited to be rescued on the Brazos River Bridge. A refugee camp was set up by town officials on the east side of the river. This is a view of the Galveston, Harrisburg, and San Antonio Railroad Bridge at the time of the 1913 flood. 
They used to have a highway bridge that looked the same way, but it was demolished in July of 1988. Before bridges, ferries were used to get across the Brazos. Massive floods also happened in 1913 and 1922. This one is from the flood of 1913. W.A. Newton, a local dentist, attempts to drive his automobile through the floodwaters. There was lots of property damage with this storm that blew in on December 6, dumping rain into the upper reaches of the Brazos, San Bernard, and Colorado rivers. This is an early view of Martin Street. The J.E. Dyer Dry Goods and Clothing Store was built in 1885 by John Eli Dyer, who was a prominent stock raiser, merchant, and baker. It was located on Morton near the corner of 3rd Street. This is the C.D. Meyer store on Calhoun Street. I really don't have any information about this store. I just think it's a really cool picture. This is the inside of a saddle shop in Richmond but it also looks like they cater to carriages as well. This is a picture of the inside of the Jones and Henson grocery store. It was located at 208 Morton Street. Joe A. Jones and Walter H. Henson started the store around 1900 and stayed in business until 1923 when it closed after Jones' death. This picture was taken in the year 1910 or 1911. The car is a Marion Bobcat and belonged to Dr. Charles Castella, who was a veterinarian in the area. Anton Wessendorf came to Fort Bend County after immigrating from Germany in 1854. He was a cabinet maker who also built coffins for people. Anton Wessendorf opened his lumber business in 1865, which was located on North 8th Street in Richmond. Later, Tony Bernard, T.B. Wessendorf, took over the business. TB served as a mayor of Richmond for 14 years. The TB Wessendorf home in Richmond was built in 1901 and demolished in 1961. This home sat on an entire city block that faced east on 11th Street and was bounded by Morton, Union, and Jackson Streets. This house was an example of fine craftsmanship which included brocaded wallpaper, floral carpets, leaded plate glass windows, and six beautiful mantles. I wish this house still existed. It is so different from the cookie cutter type housing of today. This was the lovely home of Tom A. Wessendorf, located at 11th and Morton, facing south. This is probably my favorite house. Look at the scalloped fence line and the gate. At first glance, I thought the gate had a quilt hanging over it, but that is actually just the woodwork. The Wessendorf homes are very beautiful, but they do look high maintenance to me. This house was torn down in 1954. This large house was the home of J.H.P. Davis and his first wife, Susan Elizabeth Ryan. It was built sometime between 1875 and 1880 and was originally located where the Oak Bend Medical Center is today. This was the childhood home of their daughter, Mamie E. Davis, who later married A.P. George. Mamie and Albert eventually donated the land for Polyrhine Hospital, now known as Oak Bend. During that time, the house became a home for the nurses and was used as such until 1970. In 1977, the house was moved to the A.P. George Farm location, now known as George Ranch Historical Park, and was restored in 1981. The Dr. John Bridge House is located at 902 Front Street, or it may be called Richmond Parkway now. The house you see in the photo was built around two log cabins. Different families lived there over the years. It was acquired by Dr. John Rich in 1908, and he remodeled it that same year. Dr. Rich was a well-respected citizen in Richmond and considered a pioneer physician in the county. He came to Fort Bend County in August of 1889, where he started a large general practice. The people in the photo are the doctor's wife, Mary, and their daughter, Lucille. Now we're going to look at pictures of Rosenberg. Rosenberg first got its start because of the railroads. 
In 1878, Henry von Rosenberg, the Seeley brothers, and others brought the Gulf, Colorado, and Santa Fe Railway to the area at the junction one mile west of Richmond, where it crossed the Galveston, Harrisburg, and San Antonio Railway. This ju junction was called Rosenberg in honor of Henry von Rosenberg. In 1883, George Seeley, then president of the GC and SF Railway, plotted 200 acres of land into the town of Rosenberg. A two-story Union Depot was built. By 1890, there was a population of 800 people. The photo above was taken sometime in the 1890s. This photo was taken on the corner of 3rd Street and Avenue G in 1908 by the J.H.P. Davis Bank Building. The building was built in 1907 and was Rosenberg's first brick building. The 12 steers owned by Henry Baker and operated by Paul Lehman are hauling heavy supplies between Rosenberg and Needville. Automobiles weren't around yet, so people used wagons and small buggies to get around. Yoked oxen were used to pull heavy loads. Another picture of 3rd Street. 3rd Street used to be referred to as Main Street. This one was taken in 1909, and I love all of the old cars. This photo was taken looking south in the 900 block of Main Street in 1912. At one time, Rosenberg was known as Mud City, and it is easy to see why in this photo. Can you imagine trying to do your shopping with all of this mud? The Meyer Forster building was built in 1910. This picture was taken about 1912. It is a now where another time soda fountain is located. At one time, it was also a pharmacy. This hotel was built in the early 1900s and remained a hotel through the 1960s. It was located at the corner of Avenue F and 4th Street. The man in the foreground of the picture is delivering milk. The building was demolished in the 1980s. I don't ever remember seeing this building before it was torn down, but I wish I would have. This Needode school was the second public school built in Rosenberg. It was located on Carlisle Street between Avenue I and J. R.T. McCulkey, Rosenberg's first mayor, donated the land in 1905 and the school opened up in 1906. The second story was used for the high school students while the first floor was for the younger grades. The photo was taken in 1910. Growing cotton has always been huge in Fort Bend County and there have always been a lot of cotton gins to accommodate the farmers. Here's one of the cotton gins from around 1907. There is another cotton gin in Rosenberg. Every harvest season, farmers would bring their cotton crop to the gins and wagons where it was packaged into bales and sent off on its journey to manufacturers and textile mills. These men are guarding a shipment of silver from Mexico for the Wells Fargo Company. Wells Fargo first started in Rosenberg in 1894 and Taylor Ray was the freight agent. All kinds of shipments came through and were guarded by Mr. Ray, who is shown in the photo holding the gun. Here is an example of a blacksmith's shop. Richard Brenner's blacksmith's shop and horseshoeing specialty was located at Avenue H and 2nd Street. He is the man on the right standing next to the wheel. There is a U.S. mail wagon on the right. Here is the two-story Rosenberg Union Depot. Next to the depot was a Fred Harvey restaurant. Fred Harvey was known as the civilizer of the West. He built a chain of restaurants called the Harvey House that were built along the railroads throughout the West. His restaurants were known for their excellent service and good food. Girls between the ages of 18 and 30 were recruited in the East to work in his restaurants and became known as the Harvey Girls. They were carefully trained and paid $17.50 per month plus tips and room and board. So Rosenberg had its very own Harvey Girls. The school in this photo is unknown, but notice how almost all of the children are barefooted. Here is a more recent photo of 3rd Street, taken before World War II. You can make out the Cole Theater on the left of the photo. The Cole Theater was originally known as the Liberty Theater. It was built in 1919 and named in honor of the nation's participation 
and World War I. In 1936, the theater was remodeled and named after its owner, Mark Cole Sr. This is a neat photo of an old gas station from the 1920s located at Avenue H and 2nd Street. It was owned by Melvin and Marvin Ray, who were twins. According to the historic downtown Rosenberg Pictorial, this is now the home of Bob's Taco Station and has been since 2005. The Texas Grill was a popular place and was around for many years. This building is still in Rosenberg, located on Avenue H and 8th. It was Leonard's Drive-In in 1940 and owned by Leonard and Evelyn Myers. For two years, customers of the cafe were served by waitresses on horseback. The Fort Bend County Fairgrounds was originally located where Fiesta is today in Rosenberg. This site was used as a prisoner of war camp for German POWs during World War II. The German prisoners brought great relief to the farmers in the area because they were sent out in groups to work the local farms since most of the young men from Fort Bend County had gone off to war. Many of the area German immigrants enjoyed talking to the prisoners in German. Here's a picture of the German POWs working in the fields. And last but not least is a picture of a street in Rosenberg covered with ice, which really doesn't happen very often around here. The picture is dated December 20th, 1924. If you enjoyed looking at these photos, we have a lot more in the genealogy department at George Memorial Library in Richmond. We are currently closed because of the pandemic, but when we reopen, please pay us a visit. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you.